Now, isn't that about the sweetest thing you have ever seen? That's right. That's made from my daughter's hands when she was born, a little clay turkey. And we just love to decorate for the holiday seasons, all of them. And as a matter of fact, a few days ago, we were just taking down Halloween to get ready to put up our Thanksgiving. And of course, I was thinking, what would be something fun to share with all of you? And I've got it. How about a super fun and easy fall table runner? Let's get started. Yeah, I just absolutely love those turkeys. And of course, we've got a whole mantle full of them from the kids from the years. And this is why we love to decorate around the house. And probably one of the reasons why so many of you were so interested in fabric to begin with is because you just love to be creative and you love to be around color and decorate. So we're gonna have a ton of fun today. Now, I'm assuming you're watching this video right about the time I put it out, which is way too close to the holidays to be doing a holiday project. So we wanna make this super fast and easy. And you know I love my uh, quintessential ombre border, my beautiful uh, variegated fabric from Michael Miller Fabrics. These two chunks have already been pre-cut, so we're going to get to those in a second with the instructions, but let me just show you. We're going to be using three different colors. We're going to be using um, the tan for the background today, or the sand color, and then we've got the beautiful, um, I believe this is called the uh, olive color, and then we also have the orange, but one of the things I love about our new ombres, other than those metallic triangles on there that are awesome, is the way that the fabric, you can see I'm holding selvage to selvage. You have an entire gradation of all those different colors that goes all the way across instead of doubling back at the fold. So with our green, that's beautiful there. Here's our orange color, and we're gonna use these to make out some really simple fall leaves. As a matter of fact, Mike thinks he's celebrating Canada Day back here. I know it's not a maple leaf, it's an oak leaf. Sorry to all you Canadians watching, I'm just trying to be funny as always. But yes, those little appliques, these little applique shapes just like like this, we're going to make today super simple and easy. So please bounce into the description below and help yourself to one of our free patterns that we've just put together for you. Now it does have the um, two different uh, little oak leaves that I drew there for you, but there is enough space in these spots right here. And one of the little tricks I did do on my printer is when I went to start printing these out onto the sheets that we'll get to here in a second, as I did a variety of different scale right at the printer. So I had a variety of different sizes. And then I could often take and trace another piece right into these blank sections. So I actually got four leaves on every printed page. And when I say printed page, what are you talking about, Rob? Well, now these beautiful leaves here already have a fusible web on the back. So what I did is I love the Heat and Bond product. I love the feather light and I love the light. And nowadays they have this awesome light that comes as printer sheets. So there are 10 eight and a half by 11 sheets in this package and you can run them right through your printer as Mike and I have already done. And so we got all of these sheets that came out super, super easy, made life fantastic. And at the end of today's video, we're gonna do a little contest and have a blast. And I'm gonna send some lucky winner these two strips of fabric. I've got enough left over of the background fabric that you can make your own table runner. And then I'm going to send you a package of the 10 uh, Heat and Bond light sheets that I love that are so fantastic. And then I also, because I love working with their regular stuff by the yardage and Heat and Bond has been so kind to send me goodies to give on to you great people. So anyways, I'm going to send you a package of the roll as well, just to play with. Um, so it's just fantastic. So anyways, we are putting these as fusible web. We are doing these as raw edge applique. I love Heat and Bond. And as I just said, I've printed out sheets because I wanted it to be fast. I wanted it to be easy. And I didn't even want to spend the extra time tracing. So I basically printed to two, trace two, you know where we're going. So yes, that is in the description below. You'll need that. It's going to be fantastic. And um, we're going to dive right into the way that we're going to put our uh, table runner together today. Now I want to use the width of the goods or the width of the fabric, we call it. So technically we're thinking about 44 inches running yardage this way. So our table runner could come up around 90, more like 88 inches really, but that's going to be a great expanse for a really nice large holiday table like we like to have. So in order to do that, now you can take and you don't want your width on your runner to get any wider than 18 in my best opinion. And these ones I'm actually cutting at 16 as well. So what I've done, because I need two lengths that are 45 inches, I've taken my top fabric, this beautiful sand from the ombre border, and I have two pieces of it now. So I have 
um, this piece and this piece laid on top of each other perfectly right now because in a minute we're going to do the cutting. So I've got the fold lined up and then I'll also point out here we're using the Michael Miller um, um, crystal fabric. This is a beautiful like linen color and it's got a very slight modeling that you can barely see and the colors are going to be very nice but this is just going to be the bottom. This is just going to be the backing to our table runner. This one won't be reversible because we are going to do some blanket stitching in a little bit here. So the easiest way to make our next next phase of sewing go well, so phase three, technically we're on phase one right now, is to make sure that all of our pieces are cut exactly the same size. So I have cut these all at 16 wide. I have stacked them all up along here on the fold and I'm really gonna take a moment here and make sure that all of those folds are perfectly lined up right now. And then I'm gonna put one hand up here holding pressure and I'm petting through all the layers of the fabric, making sure, cause we're gonna cut off this selvage in now. And I'm gonna rotate. And I just need this end here on the table, although I will need a rotary cutter and ruler. I just realized I can teach you all something else. This is great news, great news. And I've got another video all about the different sizes of rotary cutters, but you saw me grab two here and they're covered. They're not dangerous, so stop worrying about it over there. 45 millimeters, your standard rotary cutter. This is great for a few layers of fabric. Now you can see I'm big and strong. So I usually do six or eight layers with this, but it can get a little challenging and the, the knuckle could start to hit up on here. So a lot of times when I'm using a larger, thicker layers of cut, so I have now eight layers or more, let's say, I'm gonna use a larger cutter like my 60 millimeter. So that's gonna be great. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I wanna cut everything to the shortest piece of fabric because I remember I need all four of these to line up, remembering two layers of each of the two different fabrics I've chosen. So if this is the end of the short edges of my selvage, I'm going to come down here and again, I'm just kind of guesstimating the length we need and I'm going to back up away so when I fold this back, I can still see that my selvage is there. And now what we're going to do, and I'm looking at my eye along this edge, this is going to keep a really perpendicular line or a nice squared line across the bottom good pressure good security on my ruler putting a little bit of pressure out here so nothing moves boom cut just like that and you could have already built this thing in the amount of time I just spent describing what you were about to do let's set these out of the way here real quick now, what I want for this holiday runner, you're gonna have two choices. Like I said, because our beautiful fabric goes from dark to light, then we can go from dark to dark right, where they'll touch this way. And that's what I want to do for my table runner, or you could go light to light, but the dark ends will fall off the table. And I want that richness to bring in these leaves. So now all I'm going to do is literally line up my two dark edges of the ombre border. We're going right sides together because this is a sewing project. And we're going to go ahead and just come on over right now with just those two single layers. I'm just going to slide them right over to the sewing machine. And I have a quarter inch foot with an edge guide on. And that's going to do all of the work of keeping them nice and secure for me here. So we basically join the short seam and we're going to need to press that in a moment, but I'm going to have to tidy up here in a second. So before I get to that, or maybe while I'm doing all of that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and sew also together our backing for our table runner. This is the same fabric with no um, change in variegation. So I can just flip edge to edge, basically reading as a solid. Remember to stay right sides together, of course, and go ahead and stitch your backing together and then clear off your ironing board so we can get some of this pressing done, if you will, please. And then once you have your backing pieces stitched together, let's go ahead and just head on over to the ironing board here. And I thought I'd cleaned up, I guess not. <laughs> and we'll make ourselves a quick little press. And again, we just have this one seam that's running across our 16 inches now. So I'm just gonna hold up one edge of the fabric and press it over. We'll do the same to the other side. 
So yes, depending on how much time you actually have for this project, there's a couple of different approaches I can walk you through on how you can fill it or put batting in. As a matter of fact, look at this other one I started building. This was kind of my sample for today's show that I absolutely love using our blue. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is just something I was going to do for Christmas. Just super, super simple. This one is dark to light to light to dark again. Easy, easy stitching. So this has has the actual quilt batting in it, right? And I really like the thickness to it, but one of the things I didn't do was I didn't treat it much like a quilter. And in treating things like a quilter, what you're gonna normally do is quilt from the inside, excuse me, or from the center out, and that's what pushes all of the batting. So on that one, like today, we're gonna do like the right sides together, almost like a pillowcase where we then stitch it out at the end. And in order to do that, I'm not gonna put in batting because that adds a little bit more of a challenge where the layers can start to slip. If you are going to use the batting, I recommend the Hobbs Heirloom. It's an 80-20. And you can also get some fusible battings, which are even better, because that way you can press it to one side, and that will prevent the shifting or the sticking. Now, my true favorite, again, I know it's another Hobbs product, but this is something I've used even in my mom's quilt shop for a bazillion years. Um, excuse me, I said Hobbs. It's heat and bond, of course. Uh, but this is their fusible fleece, and it also comes on the bolt, so you can get it, because again, we're going to be about 90 wide but only 18 or 90 long, about 18 wide, 16 wide, something like that. So you can get a much smaller package. It's more efficient that way. And the fusible fleeces, you can get one or two sided and they work fantastic because you really want to be able to iron it if you're not going to quilt to begin with. Now, what I did originally, even like on that blue one, let me show you. It'll be easiest to understand this way is we're going to start right sides together. So let's take our beautiful ombre here and we're going to put it right on the table. Then I now know where my seam is, even though this probably reads as a solid to you. I know there's some modeling in our fabric. So now I know I'm going to go right sides together as I come over here and I lay this together. And remember, we cut everything the exact same size. So now, and we did the same seam allowance. So as we line this up, up top, just like this, we can go ahead and start to put a few pins into our fabric to hold things in place. So of course I want to pin my upper corner, making sure I'm right sides together. I'm having a bit of a panic moment. So well printed, it was on saturated through the other side there. Okay, so I'm going to pin that corner. I'm going to pin this corner down here. And then I'm going to come down, you know, maybe, gosh, almost like every 12, 15 inches or so and set a pin and set a pin and do that on both sides all the way through so that the fabric two layers stay perfectly secure. Then if you were going to be adding in a batting, what you would do is you would float your batting. You've already trimmed it at the appropriate width and you would float it in on the top. And what you would do is do your best not to tug or pull because that can cause some shifting. Again, that's why I like the fusible battings or the fusible fleeces even better. So at that point, you could take the fusible fleece and press it to one side and now nothing's going to shift. But for us, once I get these pins in here, we're just going to go right back to the sewing machine and stitch three quarters of the way around it, leaving just a small opening to turn it right sides back out. So I'll put these pins in here, meet you back at the sewing machine in just a second. And now with all of these pins in place, let's just roll on back into the sewing machine. Right now we're still doing our quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna leave this guide on. But like I said, we're gonna leave an opening. So right now this is my starting and stopping edge, this short edge here. So let's leave ourselves, you know, about a shaka that we can throw out there. So that means I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna start about three or four inches from the corner. I'm gonna lower my presser foot, edge guide in, Involved. If you have a needle down, turn on your needle down right now, because what we're going to do is we're going to sew over to the edge of this corner here and we can stop and pivot or you can sew all the way through. It's your choice. Now you're down and you can pivot. You can bring your fabric right around. This way you ensure you got a perfect quarter inch. Lower that presser foot and away we go. Now it's a long run of sewing, about 90 inches wide. 
keeping your fabric on the table, kind of accordion folded style in your lap, something like that's gonna help these long rows feed through. Don't need to push, don't need to pull, and remember, you put in those pins so everything's gonna stay perfect. So just sit back, relax, and do yourself some long stitching all the way back to that starting point, almost. Just don't sew it close, leave your shaka. Much wiser to remove pins always as you're going. And now here we are coming into that last corner. So again, I'm sewing off the edge, needle down, pivot, continue sewing. and just kind of charting out, that's far enough. And then I like to also go ahead and at the end, I'm just gonna reach up, hit my reverse, back stitch a couple stitches, and we'll cut those threads. And now we've gone ahead and we've left ourselves, whoops, press your foot up, please, thank you. We've left ourselves, you can probably see here, this nice opening right in there, but do grab your rotary cutter before you go any further and just take a moment and right here where those threads are carefully we're gonna do what's called dog earring. We're just gonna trim off that extra corner and that's gonna make it so when we fold this back out, right sides out, it's gonna make it beautiful and easy. And then we're gonna press it and then we're gonna to top stitch it one last time and the embellishments begin. Inspect your seams, make sure you didn't leave any pins in there because the next step is dive your hand all the way in, reach all the way deep, deep, deep in. Grab one of these corners to make your life easy now, right? And just pull it right back out and go ahead and complete the entire task. Then dive that hand right back in while you're still in the process and just get all the way up into the corner where we just were and really poke at it. Maybe you want to use like a purple thing, the back end of a stiletto, something like that that works really nice for poking out and making a nice crisp and square little corner there in our project. Okay, so I've got the two far ones done. Don't forget to do the two that are closest to you as well as you come down this way. Very simple, very easy. Okay, and then the most important top stitching is gonna actually be, and I know it might be a little hard to see right now, this top stitch edge right here where the seam is. So as I'm already starting to handle it, maybe you can see better like this, I'm just gently manipulating, I'm just starting to fold it over, and that's bringing that seam allowance that we had created when we were doing the sewing, and it's just kind of naturally bringing it over. So I'm gonna lay it in, once again, kind of tuck it under. Make sure you're not giving yourself too much of a seam allowance. So it should just be a quarter inch. Both of those fabrics folded up underneath. It should just kind of naturally come together with the progression of rolling that seam. There it is. And now I'm gonna certainly press this seam really nice and tidy because I am, I'm gonna to top stitch that closed with the same threads I'm gonna go around all my applique pieces with in just a second. The rest of this now, I do need to slowly, let me see if I can make it so you can really see nicely. You can see the seams are kind of there and about. So first step I like to do is I'm just using my fingers and I'm doing kind of this rolling method like this. And that just gets the seam right out to the edge. And I actually kind of do that all the way along. And some folks will do it while they're at the sewing machine. I like to do it at the iron first and then again at the sewing machine. So this is one of those things, like I said, it's a fast and easy project and you could have done it a lot quicker without my video, I know this. But I just wanna walk you through some of the steps of doing it nice and precise while we're working on it here. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend myself a few minutes ironing this out before I can show you how to top stitch it closed. And then I promise we'll be onto those appliques in just a second. And as it is all pressed out, we are gonna start our top stitching at that open seam so that it doesn't get away from us. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna start at the corner and I can leave the quarter inch edge guide on, but I'm not coming all the way over to the quarter inch. I really want my stitching to be right along the edge to go ahead and seal it. So I'm just kind of eyeballing my presser foot in the middle there so I can see what's going on 
And now I'm sewing top stitch, meaning through the layers of everything. And right this moment, I'm sealing our table runner closed over that little pressed area we had going there. And then I'm just going to sew myself to a corner, follow the natural pivot of the corner, and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate. And even though I've pressed my table runner's edges, I'm going to continually doing that rolling along the edges, things I've been doing with my finger, where I'm kind of pulling from one side and tugging on the other as well. I really want to make sure my seams have been pushed all the way out nice and crisp, because that'll keep everything running nice and efficiently that way, nice and precise. And again, the top stitching, if anything, is going to be what you want to look the nicest. So just take your time. Don't be in a rush. Let your machine just feed through. And then let your trailing hand, this back hand here, just continually be manipulating your seams to make sure that everything is nice. You can do a little finger press along the edge. And this is going to make it look terrific as we get ready for our applique. And then we're almost back to our little start point, as you can see there, right on target. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn the corner, take a few more stitches. Now we'll back stitch to lock it in, cut those threads, and we are all set with the top stitching all the way around the table runner. And oh boy, I told you it was going to be awesome and long. Doesn't that look fantastic? Now, our next step is we are going to get our fantastic appliques ready, right? So we've got a whole pile, like in the middle of the yard, of these fantastic fall leaves that we'll start to play with and spread across your table runner. But the easiest way to do it, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, please bounce into the description below and treat yourself to our free printable. It's right there for you. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to print out, or technically it's in your computer. If you want to trace it, print it out. If you want to just print it onto the pages just leave it in your computer and then set it over for print and you can see here there's some different ways you can play with the adjustments of the scale like I mentioned to get different sizes of the leaves the package has 10 pages in it I used all 10 pages to create 40 leaves and we're going to play with those now you're going to need to put, once you've got them already printed onto the um, heat and bond uh, printer paper, what you're going to then do is take a, a small rotary cutter or some scissors and cut out each of the individual leaf shapes, but don't cut right on the line yet. You want to save those big blobby shapes and you're going to put them on the back of your orange and your green fabrics, right? So that then these goes on the back side following the manufacturer's instructions. Usually it's about three seconds. You're just going to press and lift and press and lift to iron those all down until they're completely coated and then I usually just sit around for a little while with a cup of coffee in my hand and I then use either scissors or my fantastic shark rotary cutter to go ahead and trim away at these little edges and these little spiky edges are perfect for the rotary cutter because you can drive it both forward and backwards but it is a little bit tricky at first and not everybody has one you can get that taken care of over at robapel.com of course but if not you want to just go ahead and use your little scissors and they're just as easy you're just going to open your scissors up and you're going to let them roll through the corners and again these are all just leaves they're all going to be random so it doesn't really matter how they turn out as far as looking identical to each other now the reason I put the dark fabric in the middle because I'm thinking about the way my table is going to read so I also now want to start being able to use some of my lighter color leaves on the darker area and some of my darker color leaves, you probably can't see that one too good, some of my darker color leaves right here on some of my lighter area. Like I said, in our dark spot, I want to start, and it's the center, right? And so generally in the center of a project, you want your impact. So I've got a larger, lighter leaf uh, from my orange color. So as I begin peeling, I had a corner that was already coming off. Sometimes you have to poke at it with a little straight pin or something, but then you just peel it off and hopefully you can now see there's a lot of sheen. That's the glue on the backside of my fabric. This is scrap. You will just say that on the ground. And now I'm just going to go ahead and lay down one of those um, leaves and then I also had a light version in my green there so again just finding an edge that looks like it's loose and you can kind of roll away for any reason if the paper wasn't peeling off you could try to hit it with your iron but you do want to be cautious not to over iron any of these so now I'm just going to go ahead and lay a couple of those larger leaves in place and then think about like opposites think about kind of a checkerboard, if you will, think about kind of uh, random but 
patterned or rhythmic layout. So I'm going to take a medium colored green leaf and I'm going to kind of lay it over here. And I think I'm going to make most of my stems point back to the center line. So I'm going to just keep the leaves running mostly down the center of my fall table runner. And then I'm going to be playing with fun things like opposite colors so that your eye will read all through in a balance when it's done. So here I'm going to take another one of my lighter orange leaves and just kind of laying it about, just playing it about, okay? And what I want you all to do at home is I want you to put all of your leaves down first and then come through and press them one last time into position. Let me show you how that works. Now, in order for me to show you the top stitching, I really need to go ahead and just anchor these few so we can get back to the machine so that you can really get to your project. But what I want you to do, like I said at home, is it's always best before you fuse anything to make sure everything is right where you want it. And then you come in and you're gonna go straight down, one, two, three, and up, down and up. And remember, I've got an ironing board underneath here. I've got those two layers of fabric underneath here. If you had made your table runner and you already had batting in here, you could do that as well. And it would not release that fused fleece. If you were using the fused fleece, you could use that as well. As well. The last thing we do is all of the thread work, all the embellishing and stitching. So we just want everything to hold nice and secure until all of our threads there. And then the thread, of course, will hold it secure for you. So I've done a pressing on these. Now we're going to bounce on over to the machine and we're going to have to switch out the foot for something that has a much larger opening in it. Machine has also now been set into a blanket stitch. So that's the one that looks like a line and then little legs off of it or half of a ladder maybe. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to use that blanket stitch to go ahead and secure the edge. But the cool thing is, is remember we have the back on the project too. So this is actually going to secure all of the layers together, making life really nice and easy and actually will make this very washable and easy to use for years and years to come. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lift my presser foot up real quick. You're gonna to wanna to use a needle down feature and I'm just gonna come in one of these nice easy little runs so we can get started and you can see what we're about to do here. So I'm just gonna drop my presser foot. I'm gonna go ahead and engage my needle down feature and now the machine is going to basically take a stitch over and back and then down over back, down over back. And so you just count that rhythm and you're just watching to make sure. And of course you can use whatever color threads you want that you're just stitching right along these edges. Now I'm going to go down over back. And when I'm on my back spot or at the spot where the fabric is meeting, excuse me, the applique, it's all fabric, where the applique is meeting up to the edge, that's where I'm gonna pivot to make my corners, okay? So we don't pivot on the over or the back, we just pivot on the down stroke. So I'm gonna down stroke. Now I can make a slight uh, curve over back, right? And then it's gonna take another stroke. I can pivot again if necessary over, back, down, over, back, down. I can pivot. And then I can pivot. I was in a deep little V section there. I can now pivot up and continue on the blanket stitch process. Now you can adjust your blanket stitch to just about any width on most machines. I happen to be going down two millimeters uh, and over, excuse me, I said that wrong. I am going down 2.2 millimeters and I'm going over two millimeters. You're gonna wanna always go over at least two millimeters or it gets so short, you're actually kind of tearing up the edge of your applique piece. So you're just gonna nice and slow, take your time. Oh look, can't you see how cool that looks though with the blanket stitching there, isn't that awesome? So we're just gonna take our time and work our way around and don't be too concerned about those little pokey parts on your oak leaf. It's all for character. Here's another great spot. I'm just going to pivot, come back into that design, and pivot again. Just like that. So enjoy spending the time going all the way around all of your applique leaves before you then go back into the field of your table runner and do any additional 
uh, stitching, um, decorative stitching. You could try some free motion, but you don't have any batting in here to really help secure that stitching. So I'm gonna recommend using any of your decorative stitches that are built into the machine. I'm gonna do a little bit of perimeter work with the feed dogs up as well in a few moments. So I'm gonna float the finished product in right now. Here it goes. You can see it all finished, fantastic and beautiful. But you know that was a camera trick because here it is still sitting raw, but I promised you I would be giving away those beautiful orange and green quintessential ombres with the tan or the sand color to match. I'll be giving you some heat and bond and everything. So here's what you're going to do today. While you're watching this video, you're gonna have one week from the posting date of this video. So it came out on a Wednesday. You have until the following Wednesday to in the comments below, just simply let me know what is your favorite fall holiday memory or decoration. I just would love to hear from all of you. I love seeing all the comments every single week. And you know, my family loves to decorate for fall. We love to decorate for all the holidays. I really enjoy putting up the kids' artwork and just going back down memory lane. So let me enjoy some of your memory lane with you. Please, in the comments below today, let me know your favorite holiday memory or decoration, something like that. And then in one week, we will randomly draw one winner I will let you know in the comments below. You'll email me your address and I will package this big beautiful box up and send you off all you need for your super fun, super easy fall table runner. Until then, my friends, I will see you next week with another fantastic tutorial. Keep safe, keep creative, and would you please behave yourselves a little bit maybe? I don't know. What, are you actually still here? That's fantastic. Make sure you check out some more of my other fabulous content right here on YouTube. I think it's terrific. Please subscribe while you're there and make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss another moment of the fun.